Greetings and welcome to today's program, the PR Guru Show. My name is Janet Kiriswo, and the people behind this are the Wala production team. Now, I hope you are learning daily concerning the issues to do with public relations. And remember, I deal mainly with public relations and public relations get go hand in hand together with advertisement at the same time hr department at the same time marketing sales so the pr is the main person that oversees the reaction of the public and towards the organization and the perception the public have to, towards the organization so it's the link between the organization and the public so that is why you will find me as a pr guru interacting with the hr interacting with the advertising department interacting with the sales department communication department reason being there is a way there is a way you need to bring information out there that relates to the people well now we've had so many episodes discussing different things different things thank you so much for the feedback so far so good and today i just want to flex my muscles a bit some say I'm so serious, but let me just flex some things here. I want to talk about how to improve employee relations. Now, from picking points from one, two, three of you guys, people really have a big issue within the employees' relationships in the workplace, be between the managerial team, the HODs, the directors, the CEOs and the employees. So I just want to take a look at the relationship that you guys should be having inside the organization. First of all, there is no way you can be productive if you have a bad mood. And there is no way you can not be productive if you have a good mood. Now let's dig in. Now, how do we improve these employee relationships within the organization? Now, to ensure the employees are happy and engaged yeah, at work, you need to do the following. And don't forget that this is a work environment. You don't expect us to be laughing <laughs> all the time. No, of course, there is time for everything. Now, ensure your employees understand the culture of that organization. All right? Now, there are some organizations that always talk about values their values are care love humility integrity so you see if you have such values then clearly they will always go along within the employees and they'll want to keep that together and harmony but now let's take a step by step when your employee is happy he or she will be satisfied and at the same time will be engaged in the workplace so how do you as a manager as a human resource officer and as an employee relate how do you interact the interaction that you guys have has an impact on your organization all right and this is where i talk about being a manager is not the end is not the peak is not the maybe it's the peak for you it's the most you've ever been to be a manager, to be a head of department, to be a human resource officer. But it needs a lot of wisdom in terms of how to relate with the people under you. They depend on you for direction. They depend on you for guidance. They depend on you on how things will move forward. I told you, flexibility is really good. If you are an HR, at least, Flex your muscles. You don't have to be like the headmasters of schools, the principals of schools, you know. But at least nowadays, they are flexible. So what I'm trying to say is, don't be too hard. Because you're a manager, yes, there are a lot of expectations from the director, from the CEO. Don't be too hard to your employees. Now, I do not want to call them employees. I would want you to say, or I would want to say, don't be too hard to your team. When you call the people below you, the employees, as a team, when you say my team, you know there's a kind of prestige that comes with that because it means you're part of that team. When you say this, I'm, 
hey, these are my team, this is my number two. There is something that you give to this deputy of yours. When you say this is my number two, there is something he or she feels. It boosts the inner morale and, you know, nice. And who doesn't need that? When you say this is my team, remember you have not said this is the junior most. This is at least uh, the, the one that is the head of this. You have summarized the whole thing. So you've not mentioned whoever has not been promoted. You have not mentioned who has been promoted. You have not mentioned who is the head of department, but you've just said my team. Try using such words and flex around that. Now, you need to use positivity if you want to repair employee relations, okay? Now, choose positivity because number one, it increases staff morale. Number two, it also reduces conflicts in the office and it also reduces tension. So when they see you, they know, ah, team leader, you know, team leader. And when some people introduce you somewhere, they'll be saying, this is our team leader. You know, no, they're not, some will say manager, it's okay, but they'll say well, team leader. When they say team leader, don't feel offended, like, you know, call me by manager. No, this is something you need to repair, employee relations, okay? You have to at least be at their level, all right? The other thing also, it increases productivity. As a team, when I say this is my team, I can picture football and how much we want to perform as either Manchester or Arsenal. I can picture uh, the Kenyan team in the Olympics and how much we want to perform, you know? So it increases productivity because you have given room for people to understand you in a flexible way. Now, imagine if you're flexible that way and you're calling people, this is, this is my team and everything, these team members will always want to come and say, sir or madam, I feel like we can do this, this, this and this. I feel like they will bring ideas. They'll bring creativity. They'll bring, they will pour out their, their hearts. So you'll get to understand each and that is now when you start learning them and their strengths. Just because you've made them feel comfortable. Now, also it increases employee well-being. After some time, you will see that the employees also feel free to interact with each other. There's no that coldness because when you say a team, it means you don't have favorites. Yes. When you call your employees, this is my team, it means you don't have favorites. You have to treat each as capable of giving the same, same results. Okay. So because of that, it will increase employee well-being because they interact with each other. They tend to talk to each other. So sometimes when you even find one employee in another employee's desk, they will not like shake, shiver and be rushing to go to sit down on their desks. And now this is where now I want to, to just bring an understanding to all directors, CEOs, and organization leaders. If in your workplace, you appear and people rush to their work desks, like people who, like students who are in high school or pupils in primary school, then there is a problem and you need to fix that problem. Try appearing unannounced and just it is, it is going to be very nice if you appear unannounced and your employees are still continuing with their businesses. Even if one was in another person's desk, another person's desk, they must be engaging in something meaningful for the organization. But once you come in and everybody is rushing back, ha, huh, then it means there's something fishy happening. Of course, you will start thinking these people are not productive or you'll start thinking what was that? Or you'll just be feeling, <clears throat> because I'm the boss, I came, everybody went into line. You know, able to try that example, just show up unannounced and see if the reaction is people rushing back to their desks, there is a problem and you might want to call me very fast. <laughs> the other thing also, you set the tone of the day. How do you make sure that you achieve employee relations? Okay, number one, Set the tone of the day from day one. Okay, I'll break them down. Number two, provide positive feedback. Do not always be looking at the negative. That is number two. Number three, improve communication. Improve how you communicate. All right? Remember, these are points to improving employee relations. I'm going to expound them one by one. Number four, offer 
career development to your employees how i'm going to break them down number five help them be happy you'll be wondering why will i help my employees be happy this is a workplace we did not come here to play and here is when now you hear people saying you know there are so many people out there looking for employment <laughs> we can always always replace you mm -mm. Mm -mm. then it means you are going to be redundant you're not going to achieve whatever you achieve if you use such terms. Okay, now let's break down these points. Remember, there are five points. Let's break down ways to ensure employee relations, good employee relations in your organization. Number one, we've said set the tone from day one. Yeah, what do I mean by day one? Of course, I don't mean when you started the organization, but there's a day one for every employee. When an employee is employed in that organization, that is the day one of that employee. So you have, you have done the interviews, you have finished, maybe you do three of them, you do four, you do, okay. Now you have accepted this employee to join your organization and he or she is reporting this day. How do you start? That's why I'm saying set the tone from day one. First impression matters. Of course, we've always been reminded first impression matters anywhere. Now, do not subject an excited employee to endless work and meaningless paperwork this is day one there is something called orientation all right orientation is very important and for some of us who have experienced that it is very important because you now get to understand who is who this office where is this office now i'll give you an example <laughs> This one, I'll take you back to when I joined Form 1. And that was uh, 3rd February. It was on a Monday. I'll not say the year at a particular school. We went there and there was no orientation. So clearly, all we knew was it's lunchtime. The rest of the Form 2s, Form 3s, Form 4s will tell you it's lunch. You will see the plates. So you will carry your own and follow them. You will not, you'll learn where the dining hall is by that. It's games time. You'll see people going to the ablution, to their boxes and removing their kids for games. For once, we will still do the same. It is prayer time. We will do the same. We'll go and pray. Morning devotion, evening devotion. On Thursday, we will go for mass. There was no orientation. Orientation is your brain. See what people do and do. Now, there was a mistake. I'm very comfortable. I went to a high school that I loved and I expected, of course, I had so much expectations and there was one time it was break time and you know where I went for short call and have been going for like a week. I've been going to the teacher's lavatories <laughs> because no one told me <laughs> that this is the teachers you are not supposed to enter here and I was so amazed when I used to go because there was tissue, there was hand soap, you know, there was a sink, there was a mirror. So I used to feel like I'm hard work pays, you know, I'm in a good school. Until one time I walked out of it and I found students waiting and they were looking at me. Everyone was looking at me, the whole school. Remember it was break time. <laughs> and I was wondering like what, and so I, they were talking about me, they, was, they were pointing at me, but me with my confidence and everything, nothing bo bothers me. I was like, now nah, maybe this is how monetization starts, but I mean for it until someone called me aside and told me where were you going and I was like I've been going there for like a week and they were like no that is the teachers yeah the students is this side this side and this side so you get the picture orientation matters now the good thing is I wasn't punished I was just laughed at of course something I laugh at myself up to now it's okay now orientation matters in an organization please take this new employee slowly Say it's two weeks of orientation or it is one week of orientation, okay? Let them learn this organization. It is big. Let them learn the CEO's office, the boardrooms that are there, the names of the boardrooms. Maybe they, they are called Simba, Elephant, Ornati. You know, let them know where they, the kitchen is. Let them know if they can fix themselves some coffee when it is break time. Let them know if they can carry food for lunch. Where is the food stored? Where is the microwave? You know, let them understand. So from day one, set the tone and a friendly one. Now, what do you do as a director or CEO? You already employed this person. Give this person to a responsible person in your organization. 
you call a one person and you tell them, Mr. Martin is going to be in your department. So please guide Martin through everything that he needs to know. All right? That is very important. So it will reduce panicking because in the morning I'll just come. I'll find myself in the CEO's kitchen maybe or in the CEO's resting room. And I wasn't told and he will be like, he will wonder what happened. So set the tone. It reduces panic. It makes someone not to be over anxious because imagine you started telling someone to organize a presentation yet this person is new this person will do research will give you overboard research because he or she wants to impress okay this person will go to lens to look for the best suit and maybe this person does not even afford that suit you see this person will want to impress so it reduces panic it also reduces being over anxious and uh it reduces someone being prone to making mistakes. Let this person learn how presentations are done before you allow them to present anything. And then it makes people relaxed and then they do not feel pressured. Now, greet them and take them, uh, tell them the, the kind of time to set up, what time they come to work, what time they break, if weekends they come to work and uh, just let them know how the organization works and then introduce them to the co-workers it is always good to introduce them by name okay so you might want to do this if you have new employees you might want to set a particular time where you have a meeting in the morning and introduce new employees and you say hi good morning this is martin this is geoffrey this is uh, george and this is how things go okay now Assign a mentor to help them. I've just spoken about it. Make them feel valued. You know, this person came by merit. So this person is going to feel like, you know, I'm with my peers, you know. And then also, this helps the person learn how to fit and adjust to the organization and learn culture and new things from the organization. And remember, when I talk about culture, it is really important. The culture of an organization is not the same everywhere. When I say culture of the organization, it is always formed in line with the mission and the vision. Okay, so this organization can be a prayerful organization. This kind of organization can be a, a, a type of organization that clearly does not give a hoot about prayers or anything this type of organization can be practicing human rights a hundred percent so there is freedom if you want to participate in the prayers fine if there is prayers for this and prayers for that but i thank god because in kenya we are all believing in one god so we always find ourselves together praying together understanding the culture of the organization and growing with it and this is now where we come when you introduce an employee to the culture of organization even initially, during the interviews, they know that, well, I'm, I'm a Muslim sister or brother and I'm going to be working in this organization and they require us to pray every morning and evening and we, we pray together regardless. So in Kenya, we've not had a tussle where we fight over this. No, no, no. We meet together, we talk good things, good vibes, we pray together. And that is the most important thing about organization. That's why culture is really important and it is really serious and I'm open to coming in and breaking culture of an organization together. Now, let's do this. Contact me, these are my contacts here, YouTube, Facebook account, Instagram, and my phone number. Let's talk about what you feel like I need to come in or just brainstorm with you or just consult and uh, we will move forward. Thank you so much for those that have been reaching out. It, I don't have to come in fully to your organization. No, sometimes you need to just tell me this is A, B, C, D, and then we come up with a strategy of how I'll come get the feel of it, get the feel of your organization, and also learn where and where and where not to, and then know where to actually guide you. So thank you so much for those that have been reaching out. It gives me the morale too that there's something happening. From the PR Guru Show, my name is Janet Kiriso. Thank you to the awesome production, the Wala production. Good day.